Thank you so much, Sundar, and thank you for the Prelights community for inviting me and for DevPress to give this talk. So um, my name is Michelle Romanos. I'm a third year PhD student in mathematics. So I'm a mathematician who, um, and I, I have come to uh, to learn during my PhD to, to do biological experiments and uh, in the Benazeraf lab in the CBI and in collaboration with my co-advisor, a mathematician, Ariane Trescas in the Mathematics Institute of Toulouse. And um, today I'm going to present to you our latest results that are um, submitted in, in a preprint in BioArchive um, under the title Cell-to-Cell -cell Heterogeneity in SOX2 Bra in the Progenitors. Um, so let me start by uh, telling you about the human embryo that um, one striking event that uh, that we see in during development is that um, at two weeks, for example, it's just a it's just a flat disc. And two weeks later, we see that the embryo actually elongated. So it had a, it has a head and a tail. And uh, this elongation is also uh, coupled with the formation of uh, several tissues. Uh, particularly the uh, pa the uh, the paraxial mesoderm, which will be responsible for the future muscles, and the neural tube, which will be responsible for the future nervous system. So to study these uh, the, these these um, these embryos, these tissues, and the formation of them, we decided to take the bird embryos as a model, as they are easy to harvest and to film. Um, so this is a movie of a quail embryo within the lab. Uh, that is uh, elongating, and uh, as you see, we have the formation of several tissues. So I'm, uh, which I will be citing right now, which are so the neural tube, it's like the human embryo, and also the presomatic mesoderm, which I'll be, which I'll be, will be calling the PSM in this um, presentation, and the uh, neuromesodermal progenitor zone, which is a zone at the um, at the most posterior part of the embryo that contains undifferentiated cells, and then. Um, and these cells will uh, will have either a neurophate or a mesodermal fate. So uh, we decided to look closer at these uh, at this population of cells in this uh, progenitor zone. And uh, what we already knew about these NMPs is that first of all, as I told you, they can provide cells either to the neural tube or to the presomatic mesoderm. But also some cells remain resident in this zone and they can self renew. And uh, we also knew that they co-express markers of neuromesodermal tissues. So SOX2 is a uh, protein that we find mainly in the neural tube and Bracuri is a mesodermal marker. And uh, we knew that the uh, neuro the NMPs, the neuromesodermal progenitors, co-express uh, both, both of these markers. So when we decided to look closer at this population of, of cells, we, we, we were asking ourselves, what, how do these NMPs um, are able to find this balance between maintaining themselves in the posterior region and maintaining the pool of progenitors and also contributing to the neural tube and to the PSM. So when we, uh, when we, uh, when we did the uh, the uh, the immunodetection uh, immunodetection on these uh, on quail embryos, we saw that uh, when we focused on the progenitor zone, we saw that we had uh, cells that uh, not only co-express SOXO and Bracuri, but they co-express it in a heterogeneous manner. So we have cells that express more uh, Bracuri, which you see here are redder than others, or more SOX2, or cells that express heterogeneous levels, so intermediate levels of both. So we see that not only it's a co-expression, but also it's a, it's a heterogeneous expression. It's more than that. It's also a spatial heterogeneous heterogeneity, as we don't have any order between, um, between the expression of, of, uh, of the protein SOX2 and BRA inside this progenitor zone. So we asked ourselves, are, uh, is, is, is that ratio of, of proteins SOX2 and BRA influencing these NMP's destiny? So is it is the cell that has more BRA curie that will it go more to the to the PSM or the ones that or the one that has more SOX2 will it go more to the neural tube? And in order to answer that question, um, we uh, we by technique of electroporation. So I will explain uh, rapidly what it is. It's when we electroporate the embryo at uh, early stages and then we we look at the distribution of cells inside the, of the uh, of the tissues 20 hours later. So this is the control embryo. We see that we have cells that are um, in the progenitor zone, but also in the neural tube and also in the PSM. So you have the delimited areas uh, that I just cited here. When uh, when we overexpress the uh, the Bracuri protein, the first in interesting thing we notice is that we enter the progenitor zone and also cells tend to go more to the PSM. And when we overexpress the protein SOX2, we saw that interestingly, we also empty the progenitor zone and cells tend to go more to the neural tube. So 
We also did uh, downregulation of both proteins, and we saw that when we downregulated SOX2, we also empty uh, the progenitor zone, and we have an increase in the in the in cells in the PSM. When we downregulated BRCA1, we have uh, we also empty the progenitor zone, and we have a significant increase in the neural tube cells. So this made us um, this leads us to say that SOX2 and BRCA1 have indeed an influence on the NMP's destiny uh, in uh, in the tissues. So um, then we asked ourselves, how do these NMPs are joining the tissues? And was it more specifically via the velocity? So the first thing we did is we first filmed this embryo after electroporation. So you see um, the tracking of the trajectories of the cells in the progenitor zone here. We can see that cells in this zone are highly motile and they change neighbors. So when we uh, looked closer at, um, at each of the tissues, so we consider regions in each of the uh, neural tube, PSM, and the progenitor zone, and we saw something very interesting is that um, the neural tube is, the cells of the neural tube are the slowest compared to the progenitors and the paraxial mesoderm. In fact, the uh, PSM and the progenitors have a, um, uh, a similar mean velocity. However, what's interesting is when we look at the distribution of cells in the, the progenitor zone, is that we have cells that go as slow as the neural tube, but also as fast as the PSM. So even here, we can see the heterogeneity of cells. And one more interesting thing we saw is that the uh, trajectories of these cells are, um, are random. So even though you see this elongation, but the cells inside of the tissues are moving in a random manner. And finally, when we look at the diffusivity in each of these tissues, we saw that the neural tube diffuses the least and uh, the progenitor zone and the PSM diffuse the most with a very high diffusi diffu diffusion. So um, this led us to say that, in fact, the progenitors, the, the NMPs are highly motile and without strong directionality, uh, without strong directionality, so they move randomly. So um, the next question we ask ourselves is, can we explain this distribution of tissues by, uh, by uh, making the velocity of, of, uh, of the cells be directly controlled by these heterogeneous levels of SOX2 and bacteria inside of the, of the cells? To answer that question, we did a uh, mathematical model. So it's an agent-based model in 2D, uh, where so an agent-based model is when we look at uh, the cell itself. And uh, each cell I has a ratio, Ri, of SOX2 bra uh, concentration. And this ratio, we start, uh, we start off with an initial condition where this ratio is completely heterogeneous inside this progenitor zone. And as I told you, we make the um, motility be directly controlled by the, those heterogeneous levels. So if you consider a ratio of zero to be uh, to be a PSM cell and a ratio of one to be a neural cell. So we see that neural cells, will we, we, we give them a very low motility and PSM cells, we give them a high motility. Whereas the, uh, the progenitor, uh, progenitors, we give them an intermediate motility. And the second variable these cells have, other than their ratio, is also their position in 2D, so X and Y. And this position, this position is, a, is a, a random motion, but we add to it some properties such as non-mixing to keep the, uh, the tissues well separated and also some differential adhesion depending on the uh, dose of SOX2 that each cell has. So those are the main uh, uh, hypotheses of the model. So when we look at the model, first uh, the simulation of this model, we see that we have a very nice elongation and we have tissue formation. So you see you have a PSM in red from either side of the neural tube and we have a progenitor zone that uh, remains in the most posterior area of, um, of this elongating Sorry. embryo. And when we look at other properties of the model, we see, for example, for the velocities, we have a neural uh, tube Michelle, that can is... can uh, quickly so there is a little bar on yes. top of your presentation, which says, who, who ah, yeah, one. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Um, yes. So I was saying that the, the velocities, when you compare them in the model, you see that the neural tube is in fact, so here the slowest between uh, uh, the other two tissues. And when you look at the uh, cell, uh, uh, cell numbers, we see that we have an increase in in, in the PSM and also in the neural tube. This is due, of course, to the proliferation rates that are uh, that we know. Those are measured the biological data that we injected in the model. And also due to differentiation of cells from the progenitor zone into uh, both uh, both tissues. And also we see that we have random, um, random directionalities of uh, all the cells in all three tissues. So the model reproduces well the biological reality. 
So when we went to validate the model, we looked at um, the velocity of the progenitor zone in the uh, control case. So here, for example, you see that the motility is around one micrometer per minute. And when we overexpressed Bacuri, we saw that we indeed significantly increased the velocity of the uh, of the progenitor zone. And when we um, uh, when we overexpressed the protein SOX2, we have a significant decrease of the velocity of the progenitor zone. So the same goes for the um, down regulation where we have a significant decrease in the velocity of the progenitor zone when we down regulate brachyuri. So those um, those results are also, we could also replicate them numerically where we also uh, managed to uh, replicate a high SOX2 and a high BRA cases where we also uh, uh, either, either decrease or increase the velocity of the progenitor zone. So this experiment led us to the conclusion that SOX2 and Bracuri indeed control the, the motility of these NMPs. How? Well, Bracuri promotes it, whereas SOX2 inhibits it. So uh, as I mentioned before, not only these, these ratios are heterogeneous, but also they are spatially heterogeneous. So uh, one of the things we wanted to test is this, the importance of the spatial heterogeneity inside our system. So um, to model that, so as we already modeled the first extreme, which is where everything is completely heterogeneous, we decided to take our model to the other extreme where everything is very gradiently um, uh, distributed. So um, this is not an absurd uh, assumption to make because we got inspired from, from the embryo. In fact, when we look at the progenitor zone, we see that we have a slight tendency to, uh, to opposite gradients of SOX2 and Bracuri from the anterior to the posterior. So we have more SOX2 positive cells in the embryo right here and uh, in the anterior part of the progenitor zone and more Bracuri positive uh, cells in the most posterior. So I did another model where, um, in fact, we have a, um, a gradient-like distribution in the progenitor zone. And um, we decided to look at the different properties in each of these models. So when we compared the elongation rate, we saw that um, the elongation rate of the heterogeneous model is much higher than the one from the gradient model. And one interesting thing is something that strikes out directly from the simulation is that in the gradient case, the progenitor zone is quite flat. And so this led, leads us to believe that lead, leads us to believe that the, in the heterogeneous case um, we have um, a preservation of the of the shape of the progenitor zone. So we have we can serve the shape uh, of of this tissue. And finally, when we looked at the mean square displacement, we saw that the gradient the gradient model diffuses less than the heterogeneous model. So to conclude. Um, our results, basically, we can sum them up in, uh, in those few um, points. So first of all, we managed to, uh, we, we, we looked at the, heter at the expression of succum bacuri proteins in the NMPs, and we saw that we have a heterogeneous expression inside these NMPs. And we saw that SOX2 and bacuri control the NMPs maintenance versus the uh, tissue participation, so to the neural tube or the mesoderm. And um, we also saw that these uh, ratios also control the motility of cells by inhibiting it, uh, SOX2 inhibiting the motility and Bracuri uh, promoting it. And also the progenitors, uh, we proved that they display a very high motility and a random motility with no apparent directionality. And uh, our final conclusion is also, so as you, as, as you know, in, in biological uh, model, in the biological models that we know, we have a lot of models that are very gradiently distributed and uh, in a very strict way. And uh, here, what we are what we are proposing by doing do both uh, models, the gradient model and also the heterogeneous model, is that here heterogeneity has actual benefits on this. Uh, on the system. In fact, it, by, by controlling the motility, it promotes elongation and especially fluidity. And also we see some self-correction in, uh, in the simulation and also it preserves the shape of the progenitor zone. However, what we are proposing here is that the embryo is indeed somewhere in between. And this makes it uh, robust. So it's somewhere with a tendency to an opposite gradient of SOX2 and Bracuri, but also heterogeneity somewhere in the middle. And this is also has a lot of benefits uh, for our system. And um, thank you very much for listening. So I'd like to thank finally uh, the Benazeraf team in which I conducted this, uh, this, uh, this research and uh, our collaborators from all over the world. And don't hesitate to check out, uh, if you want more details on this presentation, to check out our preprint. Thank you. So there are a couple of questions which I'll uh, uh, read out to you. 
the first one is is there any relation between the migration direction of one progenitor cell with its uh, immediate neighbors uh, is there a lot of neighbor exchange or do they uh, move in a correlated fashion between the migration direction of one progenitor cell and its immediate neighbors um we we haven't uh, we we didn't look at the uh, at, at, at the immediate neighboring's uh, velocity, but we know that they have the same the, the same approximate okay. migration, yes, uh, basically, yeah. But is there a lot of neighbor exchange? We did not, uh, we did not um, uh, quantify it, but we can see it on the uh, okay on hmm. the tracking. So, so, so the next question is: Are the surrounding tissue proper properties uh, similar along the AP axis where the cells are moving? Um, you know, do you think, uh, you know, local changes in tissue properties could affect the velocity or motility of cells? Yes, of course, of course. In fact, um, um, th th so this is a very, uh, very nice question because um, when you add those properties, in fact, when you add, for example, the maximal density and everything, um, this random motion, we can't even call it a random motion because it's, it's a biased random motion. So we really um, change the velocity because we are somehow changing the uh, the direction of this, the migration of the cell when it hits a high density uh, area. Of course, it has uh, mm -hmm. it has an effect, yes. So one final question before we move, move to the next talk. Uh, how is the heterogeneity in SOX2 and Bracuri uh, expression generated in the first place? And uh, how is the ratio of these two cell types regulated both in the model and in the embryo? Maybe keep it a bit short and then, uh, you know, we can discuss more uh, uh, after all the talks. Uh, yes. Okay. So um, maybe I can answer uh, very fast on the model because it's uh, <laughs> it's it's easier to answer on the model. Um, how is the ratio regulated? It's uh, it's basically we can think of it of a ratio of concentration of SOX2 over SOX2 plus Bracuri, and uh, we regulate this ratio by uh, putting a noise which uh, makes a cell, in fact, differentiate through this noise. So it will differentiate either to a PSM cell or a neural tube cell. So this is how we induce heterogeneity through the noise. And also we induce differentiation because at some point the cell will come out of the, uh, will have to differentiate uh, thanks to the noise. Okay. Yes. Cool.